from the Otaniqua Pass, George, South Africa. Welcome, Welcome to, to the GCN, GCN Show. From a snowy Denmark. Welcome to the GCN Show. From Blanche Chairs Lookout, Channel and Tobago. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we are taking a look at the next big thing in cycling, extreme gravel riding. Plus we get our new Head of Fashion's verdict on the brand new Colnago, which was released last week. And we've got all of your favourites as well. We've got Wattage Bazooka, we've got Caption of the Week, Comment of the Week, and of course, Tech of the Week. And after last week's show, this show has added no fighting. It's a peace and love show. <laughs> Gravel bikes are being touted as the new big thing in cycling. Not even the next big thing, but the new one, the one that's already here. No one quite knows what they are. It's not a cross bike, but it's more than a road bike, and yet still less than a mountain bike. But undoubtedly, gravel riding as a thing is becoming more and more popular. The one thing that is for sure, though, they are blimmin' good fun, even on a road bike, can you, <laughs> No. How about now? No, look. Seriously, I'm fine. Now, a lot of gravel riding seems to be about long distance and riding in far out places. But as over here at GCN, we have our fingers firmly on the pulse. Fingers on the pulse? I mean, okay, really? We haven't got our fingers on the pulse, but what we have seen is an emerging trend. Extreme gravel riding. Have a look at this. Watch out. Up. Absolutely insane. Well, the rider in question, nicknamed Hercules, is called Marcus Stockel of Austria. Now, he's broken the speed record for a production bike. Now, the bike in question is a Mondraker Summum Carbon Pro Team, and the speed, 167 eye-watering kilometers an hour on gravel. Yeah, and the gravelly road probably doesn't get ridden all that much. He rode down an unnamed peak in the Atacama Desert of Chile, and it was 4,000 metres high. But at least it ticks that box of riding in far out places. Yeah. And that bike as well, that doesn't look like a normal gravel bike, does it? Nope. Maybe that's one for you to try next time, Lordy. Happy with my road bike, thanks very much. Uh, anyway, Stokers wasn't in fact the fastest ever run on gravel. That claim goes to French speed king and presumably certified lunatic Eric Baron, who hit 172 kilometers per hour, albeit on a very purpose-built gravel bike forward slash speed bike. I think he's also got Wait, the accolade. What would that be called? Like a yeah, road speed, speed bike. bike. Greed bike? Agreed bike. Agreed? Ooh. Agreed. And he also has the award for the worst ever crash on gravel. Oh, God. In fact, it's too bad for us to show on the GCN show. But amazingly, he got up afterwards and walked away with just two broken ribs. I can't believe he didn't no. suffer Ridiculous. more than that. It is just absolutely bonkers. It's incredible. But it's not only recovered, that he's still riding downhill without any brakes. In fact, he wants to beat his own world record, which he set on snow, 223 kilometers an hour. Oh. I can't help but wonder though whether this trend towards extreme gravel riding is going to remain as a bit of a subculture. Because not only is there an inherent risk of crashing and a lot of pain, but also I don't think many cyclists are going to be willing to wear one of those suits. It does look like it's been pumped up by a bike pump. He it? does, but I think he wears it pretty well actually. Maybe that's what comes True. with being nicknamed Hercules. It is time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. You get it started, Matt. Thank you. We've I actually was. got that wrong. Genuinely, yeah, didn't even we fake didn't. That. Yeah, that was wrong. But anyway, you just carry on. on me. Sorry. Well, first up this week, we were contacted by the uh, designer of the bike that we looked at last week with the amazing cockpit. Do you remember we coined it, the DeLorean? Well, I do that, indeed remember that. Yeah. Well, uh, Lewis Alex Perry has got in contact saying that bike is in fact called the DeLorean and was made by Simon Morrill, uh, a mechanic at Swindon in Stoke on Trent. Uh, and there's a picture of the bike itself, which is fire extinguishers incredible. on the back. Well, the DeLorean did emit fire, didn't it, when it travelled back in time? It, True, have they it said what that 
dashboard no, actually does. No explanation at the dashboard, so we urge you to get back in contact. We're intrigued to see if that is just. Is well, it a hack or a bodge? We work? don't know what it does. It's, it's an amazing. ongoing saga, isn't it? It is. It's certainly a lot on that bike. Yeah. It's good strength training. Meanwhile, Harry McFarlane wrote into us on Facebook. He owns a bike shop and he sees lots of hacks and bodges there. Amongst them, this one, which is an electronic folding bike. Has it got lights in its pedals and its tires? It's got Tron wheels. Finger reflectors. Reflectors. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's just yeah. a flash on the camera. Because that would be a That's great a hack. Big battery on the back there, wasn't it? Yeah, punchy. Blimey. Right. Next up, Sean Salazar. I like that. This is cool. Look, Look at that. that. Store your bike inside, hang your clothes on it as well. That's that's a nice wardrobe. Makes Got getting it. your bike out for a ride a slightly more time consuming experience, doesn't it? It does. Actually, that's to put a good them point. on your bed. He's going to get, be getting a phone from a certain uh, Swedish uh, furniture store very, very soon, <laughs> I reckon. Uh, next up, we have this from Zach Zigwar. Um, he's basically <laughs> used gaffer tape. gaffer tape and zip ties to tether some sort of. Is that a transport box. cat, do you think? Crikey. It's. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Really. Is, yeah, I, I looks a little bit looks dicey. anything alive no. with gaffer tape. Our uh, friend Russell Downing's been on here as well. He's a big lover of Zwift and he's made this setup for when he's abroad. Gone away on a training camp, must be training indoors for something. It's just that phone covered in. Maybe it's. Is it cracked or has he got. He's cracked it. Oh, and it just says hashtag sellotape. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's definitely a good. bodge, isn't it? This next one, this is very cool actually. What so, David Ford uh, needed more battery life on his Garmin because he was doing an epic ride. So, he 3D printed a new Garmin mount and then attached his battery underneath it. Amazing. That is Not cool, very isn't aero. It? I'd probably stick it somewhere That's else. That's ingenious but to still, say you know, the very least. Yeah, that is a neat solution to a problem there. Very cool. Indeed. Way to go. Well, next up we have this from G. Ste J. Steens over on Instagram. Here's my desk I made from a bookshelf. So I guess you can sort of do your work whilst pedalling on the turbo. But you can't ride on the hoods or the tops. Yeah. You can't. It's a series of breeze blocks, isn't it? And then with a little shelving Is unit that a in the bodge? middle. I think it could be. A, a I bodge. think it's a hack forward slash bodge. Mm. I think it's. Mm, it's both. That's generous. There's a lot of indoor training stuff going it's on. A lot, it's yeah. uh, Rob has it. written in as well on Twitter. He's made a DIY iPhone mount for when he's riding <laughs> indoors, so he can just place it nicely on there. I expect it fits very Looks well. Looks a little bit indeed. like a coffin. There. I think it's more for an iPad than an iPhone. It's enormous. <laughs> yeah. Then this one, in the true spirit of hack or bodge. <laughs> Look at that. What happens if uh, if your bars are too narrow diameter for your stem? Well, just shim it with nails. I think it's the same nails as used in last week's uh, break blocks monstrosity. <laughs> Do you remember that one? I think they'd sort of guest appearance in this week's show again as well. Are we saying hack or bodge for that last one? That's a bodge. With the nails? Yeah. I definitely think that's a bodge. Anything yeah, involving bodge. nails is probably going to be a bodge. Although, if you do have a hack with nails, let us know. In touch. Yeah, keep in touch on social media with your hacks and bodges. We do love watching them every week, and you can use the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Or hashtag RustyNail. <coughs> Time now for Dom's tweet, bracket S, close bracket, of the week, because there's two. So it's Dom's tweets of the week, and the first one is from Michal Kwiatkowski of Team Sky, of course, who says, Thanks, Ilio Kaiser, for your help in catching my flight. A couple of nice emoticons, hashtag VCV2017. He's of course referring to their rapid breakaway at the back end of the final stage of the Tour of Valencia last week. Uh, it clearly indicates the speed that they sort of kept up on the final circuit. How rapid it, was it? It, it was very blimmin' fast. Short, was shortened stage, wasn't it? And the uh, Kaiser got caught with Kwiatkowski in the closing uh, few metres. So he still came sixth. That's how close it was. It Ooh. was very, very close. So um, but at least he caught his flight, just, so that's good. Yeah. Second tweet came from Mark Cavendish. He wrote, so it turns out I won the UCI Cycling Asia Tour over in 2016 and I didn't even know. <laughs> Happy with that. Thanks at Team Dimension Data. Another win on the board. I wonder, think, whether, yeah, I wonder whether I'd won the UCI Asia Tour, but no one ever told me. Well, I wonder if I won anything. <laughs> I just didn't know. <laughs> Maybe they didn't know. <laughs> Probably not. You know, just look back, because we've gone the UCI Watson, check. Just in case I won the Asia Tour. I, I did Tour King right. High Lake once. Uh, no. No. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Bradley Wiggins is out of the jump. Already? Indeed. Now it seems the curse of the GCM presenter has struck again. No sooner had we mentioned his participation in the Winter Sports reality TV show than he was out. But with a fractured leg, which he detailed here on his Instagram account. That, that Instagram post, that looks remarkably like Dan. Are we sure it's Wiggins? Well, I think not, it's, it's doppelganger it's territory. Me. You look, it's insanely I mean, like He's doing a little experiment. Dan, stick that on. Yeah. 
We need to, we need to check this out. I'll tell you, actually, something happened to me the other day when I flew back from the Dubai tour. Got to the baggage carousel in Heathrow and two girls came up and said, could we get a picture with you? I yeah. said, yeah, sure. And then we had a bit of a conversation and they said, anyway, we thought you were supposed to be on the jump this evening. I was, bad. I was a bit gutted. To be fair, yeah. looking like that, you could be quite a good stunt double. Are you any good at winter sports, then? No, I can't do it. I'm terrible at winter sports. You'd be absolutely fine. You'd be a perfect fine. stunt yeah, double for Wiggins, then. Fantastic. Job done. Right, moving swiftly on. I guess that's the last we'll see of Bradley for some time. It's unfortunate. But, in other news, sticking with the wintry theme, there's been a winter cycling conference in Montreal yeah, in Canada. Right. Yeah, apparently winter cycling has increased by 14% over the last three years. Mm -hmm. uh, they know very much how to dress for winter cycling when it's extremely cold, but what they are afraid of is ice on the road and on the bike tracks. But what isn't a hacker of for sure is this. It's the world's longest elevated cycleway in the world. Wow. It's in Xiamen in China. Now, the city itself are already pretty progressive and forward thinking when it comes to anti pollution measures, but this is really taking it to another level. <laughs> oh. It is five miles long, apparently, and it connects up the key neighbourhoods in the city. And we reported, actually, a couple of weeks ago on the GCN show, there is a huge rise in public hire schemes in China, and this apparently takes advantage of that as well. There is only one problem, as far as I can tell. There is very sensibly a 15 mile an hour speed limit on there. But that's not, it's going to preclude training on the mm, way to work. Have you thought about that? Because otherwise, speak, just... speak for yourself, so I get quite a lot out of that these days. <laughs> uh, so we move things on to some racing news because yeah. it's been revealed where the 2018 Tour de France is going to start. Really? really? Where? Yeah. Wait for it. It is going to start in France, Ooh, which actually wow. is quite rare these days. But to be specific, the opening stage is going to be in the Vendée and Pays de la Loire region in western France. And apparently there are rumours around that they might be taking in some of the gravel roads that are used in Trobro on a race that you and Larcy have done and that I did but didn't finish at one point in their careers. And actually, that would be really interesting because they are far rougher than the gravel oh. roads that you get at something like yeah. Strada Bianca. And they're super Tour narrow, of France well. does gravel. That's like speed oh, yeah. gravel. Gravel speed. Greed riding. Agreed, we do have our yeah, fingers on the Yeah, I was just about to say, we do. We've yeah. got to do a recon of that, haven't we? Yeah, Agree, oh, agreed yeah. recon. Agreed recon. Now, we're going to end cycling shorts this week with some very sad news, and that's that former Belgian road race champion Serge Baguet has died of cancer at the age of just 47. Now, he was a pro from 1990 all the way through to 2007, and his career highlight was winning the stage of the 2001 Tour de France. Very sad news. Competition time now, and we need to give you a little bit of a nudge. Now, if you haven't already entered a competition to win two entries to the Maratona de les Dolomites, probably one of the finest Grand Fondos in the world, do it now, because time is running out. It certainly is, and it's not just the entries that you can win either. You also get four nights accommodation and a contribution towards your flights to get there as well. That is a cracking prize. You guys entered it? No. Time's running out as Time well. Time is running out. We have also, as well as a nudge for an entry, got results for you this week because we have the results of the latest unboxing. It was the Cyclops Hammer Smart Trainer, if you remember, and the winner, drawn at random, is... Kathleen Hayes from well the done. United States. Congratulations, Kathleen. Well done, Kathleen. Not only win the prize itself, but also another rendition of MC Hammer's favourite famous tune, by Simon. <laughs> hey! <sighs> Not gonna do it. No, no, no. I'm dope on the floor and I'm magic on the mic. <laughs> no? After a hugely busy week of racing all over the world just a couple of weeks ago, last week was actually comparatively quiet. Yeah, there were a couple of races that took place in Spain. The one-day races, the Vuelta a Murcia and the Clásica de Almería. The former of which was won by Alejandro Valverde after a daring attack where he went away from the rest of the group with 70k still to 70K? go. 70k? 70k, yeah, won by over two minutes. However, probably the most exhilarating part of that race was this footage shot on the side of the road down a descent where he must have been going at about 80k per hour. Did this bunny hop over this piece of road? Must be a pothole there or something. Now, in the footage itself, it doesn't actually look that high, but just check out this still. Yeah, it is. That's pretty impressive. It is, that I'd a, say. That's a proper, proper look there. That is probably on a par with what you achieved in the Y Valley a few months ago. Almost. Should we have a comparison? Par. Okay, then go on. <laughs> mm. and, and also, and crucially, down. Valverde actually bunny hopped to the pothole as opposed to bunny hopping before <laughs> the pothole and then riding through it. Um, anyway, moving on to the race that you mentioned, the classic Al Maria, it was Magnus Court Nielsen who took his second win of the season. 
He's absolutely on fire. Watch out him later in the year. And I think a big win for Magnus Court Nielsen is just around the corner. Yeah, he's going to win a one day classic soon, isn't he? Balance zone, right, you reckon? A cheeky tip. Really? <laughs> there was also the Trofeo La Guelia as well, which was won by Fabio Fellini, who is. Your uh, mate. He is, yeah, yeah, Matt's mate. Although, is he still your mate after he marked you down? <laughs> no, I need the it. Not really. I'm not happy with that five. It's definitely a five and a half to six. Well, you spilt it. Ah, the rotation. Five. Five! The I'd, be, I'd be upset if someone. Took, took walk to my table with a spilt cappuccino. Yeah, and I got the temperature wrong, didn't I? But oh well. Uh, also, the cyclocross season is just coming to a close now. The final round of the Super Prestige took place in Middlekirka. Uh, Matty Vanderpool took the win there again. In fact, he won the overall series by winning seven out of the eight rounds, which is quite an incredible record. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? Uh, I'll take that. Yeah, newly crowned world champion Sanna Kant took the women's race and also, also the overall Super Prestige there. She won four out of the eight rounds over the course of the season. Proving once and for all, Sanic. She can. You know what? For a comparatively quiet week, there's quite a lot going on. There's there, quite a bit actually, true. wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should redo the intro again. Yeah. <laughs> caption time now, and we're going to start, as always, with the results of last week's caption competition. Oh, the photo we gave you is this of John Degenkolb. I want to beat on. Shrugging his shoulders, that's right. And the winner of the GCN Camelback water bottle is Simon Whiteside with this absolute perla. Trek, Sega, Fred, I don't know. That's actually <laughs> That's pretty, pretty good, yeah. Because that was a tough one, wasn't it? We All struggled. Right. It that was. was a tough one. Yeah, yeah. well done, Simon. Get in touch with us on Facebook with your address and we'll get this bottle off to you as soon as we possibly can. Uh, this week's photo, this one of Jerome Cousin of Cuffred is warming up for a time trial recently and Matt is going to get you all started. Go on, Matt. Yeah, I thought about this and it's uh, Jerome Cousin swatting up on his tax ticks. <laughs> yeah, mate. Take Thank that with you me. very much. Honestly, indeed. Simon, don't worry, we'll get another one out Back to you. Pocket. But that, mate, that's seriously. Uh, that's as ever, you can leave your caption suggestions in the comment section just down below. I'm sure you can do better than that. You have to wrestle that, that bottle not, off Matt because I'm that. pretty sure that's a. That is mine. You can just lick it now and then they won't want it. Comment of the week now, and as always, you have been leaving some brilliant, brilliant comments underneath our videos. We do enjoy reading them. First up, this week, one of the ones we picked out is under Richie Port's secret training video with Matt. There was this one from Michael Albany who said, if you tied Matt's hands behind his back, could he still talk? <laughs> now, a lot of you obviously agree with that. There's 119 likes. So there was a reason why I brought some gaffer tape to the GCN show. Yeah, Matt, we're just going to do an experiment, mate. Hang on a minute. No, behind your back. Let's do it properly. Right, there you go, Matt. Cheers, mate. Could you now present the next one? Uh... Right. Do you want I to take over, Dan? This is great, yeah. Go on, try, should, try, uh, try to do it, mate. Keep try to do it. Right more often. All right, underneath last week's GCN show on the topic of fighting, uh, log to the base two. But has cycling ever broken out in a boxing match? Probably not, actually, is it? Probably I think not. No, I don't know. Matt, do you want to do the last one, Matt? <laughs> do you know what's quite funny on that Richie Poor Secret <laughs> Training video? Is oh. that not only are your hands moving around, you also your right foot. It's in the intro. It's just tapping am. away. I can't. Hang on a minute. Right, let's crack on because he can't speak. Should we get uh, the last set, mate. Oh, comment that comes God, from yeah. Ryan Woods? Oh. He put underneath the uh, discussion on FTP and how important it is to cycling. OMG, how many takes did that take? Bright sunshine at the start into evening with different snacks on the table. Well, I can tell you, we were disturbed somewhat by a rather noisy family in the background. We were, so it did take we? quite some time. But also, Matt decided he was going to have a fit of giggles. It was this. nearly 15 minutes long, wasn't it? They can sometimes keep up. Help it! Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Yeah, these. Fing hell. There's going to be a dramatic change in light between when you finish your sentence and when I start mine, right off the back of it. The great Ernesto Colnago turned 85 last week and to celebrate his birthday, Colnago released a new bike which they have called the Otanta Cinque, which means 85 in Italian. Thank you, Dan, for that. <laughs> it's going to be in a limited run. They're only going to produce 85 of them, funnily enough. Makes sense. Uh, it's funny, that. It's based on the C60, the current model, but each one is going to be custom made by hand out in Italy and then all of them are going to get that 
quite frankly, amazing looking gloss silver paint job. And then a bit I particularly like is that the logo is going to be the same logo that Colnago first used right back in 1954. Right, and then his signature is on the down sheet. It's incredible to think they've been making that bike for that long, isn't it? It's a long time, isn't it? That is pretty cool, but I think it might be an opportune time to ask the GCN new head of fashion, Adam Bly, the road race champion of Britain, run of Aqua Blue, his opinion on the Atlanta Cinque. So, Adam, is this hot or not? That is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. The man has spoken. He has. I'm quite relieved he said hot, actually, because I thought that was hot. Well, yeah, and also, I if he didn't think hot. it was hot, then I think we'd have had to have a discussion about letting him go, because yeah. that would be a... That'd be a on his very first mis mis one. Well, yeah. that, that would constitute gross misconduct. Well, he's hanging on by the skin of his teeth. He only just got that right, didn't he, really? Yeah. Well, we'd like to know what you think at home as well. Do you agree with Adam and the three of us and think it's hot or not? You can take that poll. Uh, you'll be able to find a link to it in the screen right now. Mm, moving on to the murky world again of Ooh. Kickstarter. Ooh. Now, for once, it's actually been quite restrained. Haven't found anything too bizarre, mm. but did a bit of digging and I found this, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty cool, actually. It's called the Tiger Mini Plus, which is a titanium lock weighing in at only 400 grams, which claims to be as secure as traditional locks that weigh twice as much. Are you serious? That was the, that was the weirdest thing you could find on Kickstarter. It that sounds quite all right. It wasn't quite the weirdest thing. There was this chap who's got a bakery, right. which basically he wanted to take it outdoors and make it kind of mobile. And like do the baguettes and, and kind of pan of chocolate. He wants to become a delivery public. boy. That's right, yeah. But so he was funding a bike. Really either. Delivery just bike. To get a bike. Well, that's it, again, it wasn't the most exciting week in the world of Kickstarter, but hopefully next week will be a little bit better. It's time for GCN's Wattage Bazooka! There we go then. The award for the Pro Wattage Bazooka of the Week this week goes to. Movistar's Alejandro Valverde for that incredible long-range attack at the Vuelta Mercia. He set off his wattage bazooka at the bottom of the Collado Bermejo climb. Well pronounced. Yeah, very with, good. Thank you very much. With, would you believe it, 70 kilometres still to go, and then he put a whopping 2 minutes 10 seconds into the bunch. Now, unfortunately, we can't show you the TV footage of it, but we are going to reenact the whole race winning break with these tiny cyclists. Matt, take it away. Okay. It's the bunny hop. That's a big gap, isn't it? And there you go. It's that about, was seriously about two impressive. minutes ten, that is. Yeah. yeah. Amazing win. Very impressive, Alejandro Valverde. Okay, the viewer What is Bazooka this week goes to. Ready? Julie Bew. She was nominated by her husband David. Calm it down, Matt. Sorry. Uh, she has had four knee operations, uh, but has come back from all of that to complete the Rocket Sportive in very freezing, snowy conditions. So well done, Julie. Yeah, right. fair play for getting out in that weather. That looks a bit. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, if you've got any nominations for a What is Bazooka, you just use the hashtag What is Bazooka, which is on here somewhere, uh, on various forms of social media, and she'll pick one this time next week. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's when to eat on your bike. And on Thursday, it's our part two of the bikes of the World Tour. Friday is Ask a GC Anything. And then we think Saturday's Pro Bike is probably going to be a good one because it comes from our new head of fashion, Adam Ooh. Blythe. It is his Ridley Noah SL from the Aqua Blue Sport team. Yeah, it better be a good Pro yeah. Bike. Because yeah. otherwise, again, you know, well, proof is in the pudding, isn't it? Mm. Sunday, uh, I took a good look at the Shimano power meter that is going to be released soon. Uh, so that is coming out on Sunday, as in the video, not the power meter. And then Monday, it's how to buy a bike off eBay. Ooh. And on Tuesday, it's GCN show 215. Right, it's getting towards the end of the show now. So that means it's extreme corner. And this week, it's a roadie on a mountain bike. It's Ryder Hesiodel on the beach, in his flip-flops, just so getting some serious air. Big air. Watch this. Ooh. Whoa. I tell you what, you might want to have another look at that, because if you didn't think that was very extreme, yeah. check out the landing and have a look at that handlebar snapping in half. Just he did well to hold that he up, did didn't really he? He did really well to hold that up. 
But what a travesty. That bike skills. is a classic. Richie P21. I'm sure you can really find nice. a pair of retro handlebars to replace them. Hopefully you can. Hopefully some safer ones. He held it up. Did you see the way his feet wrap around the pedals when he hit the deck as well? That's some fair skills there. He, he does have some fair skills, doesn't he? Shack we don't have an option with flip-flops. <laughs> no, you don't. No, <laughs> fair point. point. Good point. Right, unfortunately, I think that brings us to the end of the GCN it show does. for this week, doesn't it? Uh, make sure if you like this video, do give it a good thumbs up and also subscribe to GCN. To do it, it's completely free. You're just going to click on the globe. And for a video that's quite secret, it's out there now, it's not a secret anymore, Richie Port's secret training. Click down there. Or if you'd like to see the video where the sun goes down very quickly, uh, down here, Matt and I discuss how important FTP is to cycling. We do.